Now, a statue paying tribute to three pioneering black footballers has been unveiled in West Bromwich. It's been called the Celebration Statue, to remember the influence the players had while fighting racism on the pitch. Well, let's cross now to Callum Watkinson. And uh, Callum, this is a really nice tribute to the players and, of course, their families. Yes, that's right, and there are a fair few of them here today, young and, and old and all very excited. But, you, you know, Sam, it's impossible to overstate, really, what these three men had to go through when they were playing back in the late 70s and early 80s, enduring week in, week out, uh, the kind of racial abuse that, frankly, would probably land you in prison if you were to repeat it today. Uh, so what's been commemorated with this statue is not just the careers of three outstanding local sporting heroes, but also their dignity and their determination to be the best players they could be in the face of some considerable opposition. They became known as the Three Degrees, but changed the face of British football by much more than that. Immortalised now in the centre of the town that made them welcome when racism on the terraces was still the shameful norm. The one degree who survives gave the bronze a warm review and said things have changed for young black players, but not nearly enough. Whilst we've got to celebrate the journey that we've come on and a lot of changes that have been made with all the anti-racism campaigns, I still feel that there's a lot more to be done and we need to change our thinking on how we address it because at the moment we're doing the same thing and getting the same results. And I think it's a shame that we've got players talking about walking off the pitch, something I would never advocate, but I would support any player who wishes to do that because enough's enough. Brendan, Cyril Regis and Laurie Cunningham put in almost 600 appearances between them for West Brom in the late 70s and 80s. Black players were rare, but to field three at once was unheard of. And the man who made this statue views it as a political, not simply a commemorative work. It's called a celebration sculpture. And it's putting two fingers up to all the chants and everything else. They said, look, we're fantastic footballers, we're celebrating the goal. And the kind of roar of the West Brom fans that are coming back to them because the skilled players and that's why it's all about. The Professional Footballers Association donated £40,000 to the project when it was in doubt. Its efforts to stamp out discrimination in the game continue often well away from football grounds. Today members of my staff are meeting with the social media companies, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook etc, uh, to look at what we can do about how social media is being used for abuse and it really needs those who believe in equalities to stand up and be counted. These three men were doing just that 30 years before Twitter was invented and it's for that battle against prejudice that they will be remembered. But as Raheem Sterling, Danny Rose and a host of other players will tell you, it's a battle that is far from won. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined now by Michelle Regis, who's the daughter of Cyril Regis. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Um, now, this was a project your father got to see begun, but sadly never saw finished. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, he was there at the beginning and, yeah, a heart heartwarming project but heartbreaking feeling that he didn't get to see it finished it's a year since he, he's passed how's the family been coping with that yeah as you can imagine difficult time um, still doesn't feel real but here we are now as a local yourself you're going to be walking past this thing so are your children how does that, how does that feel <laughs> again surreal um, I shop here so I'll be walking past thinking gosh there's my dad and uh, you know my children's children's children will see this, so it's a great piece of history left. Now, this business about your father being a, a trailblazer for black players, do you think, was he aware of that at the time of how important what, what he was doing was? Definitely not. He just wanted to play the game. It's only till further down the line um, you see how people's hearts were changed and people's testimonies, and it's only then he realised, OK, <laughs> OK, we did something special. And we've seen in just recent weeks what happened in Montenegro with the England team and Raheem Sterling's been speaking out, Danny Rose. I mean, how do you feel about the current state of racism in the game? How do you think your father would feel? 
it's a different time for when he played. You know, there was thousands and thousands of people sh shouting racial abuse. Um, so it's come along, but it, it's still not there. Um, and I think he would feel the same. It's moved forward, but we're still not getting it right. All right, well, maybe we can, we can in the future, Michelle. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, and the FA did tell us today that they're doing a lot of work around tackling discrimination and to increase representation at all levels. They say Brendan Batson is well known to them from that work, but as you heard in my report there, he feels there's a great deal still to do. Indeed there is. Callum, thank you very much.